In this tutorial, I'll review various methods of contouring outlines in a Mesa Troll 3 axis mill. Start by navigating to the program page. I have a program already started with the part face to Z0. I'll verify I'm in the right program and select Program Edit to begin. For the first contour I'll select Line Left to Climb Mill this contour in the upper left. I'll select Line Machining, then Line Left from the menu choices. The choices shown are pretty self-explanatory. Line Center, moves the center of the mill down the center of a defined shape. With Line Right or Line Left, the tool offsets the radius of the tool, to the side of the selected side line, reference to the direction of travel. The offset radius is derived from the actual diameter in tool data. Line in and line out work similarly but require a closed shape. The chamfer selections work the same way as line selections. The text selection is for engraving and will be discussed in a future module. After selecting line left, I'll bring up the help screen for the rest of the line. For Z depth, I'll go just a bit below my part thickness at 0.35 inches. Z axis direction stock removal is 0.3 inches. Our plane stock removal is 0.75 inches. For roughness code, I'll use 3 with no finish allowance in Z, but I'll leave 15 thousandths in XY, for a finish cut. To plunge off the part, I'll select open for both my start and end point attributes. Interference in the R plane is really just for chamfering but I'll set it to 9 inches. And I don't want to chamfer on my cut. For my rough tool, I'll use the tool data window to select my 0.5C, and mill. I'll skip priorities for now, and auto set my approaches. Since I'm using an open start point, I'll wrap it to Z depth. I'll use auto set for depth Z, width of cut, surface speed and feed rate. Because my stock removal R, is greater than my tool diameter, zero has been set in width of cut. This means I have to set the width per pass for multiple passes in the XY plane myself. I'll use 0.2 inches per pass for multiple rough cuts. I'll set an M8 for flood coolant on. Using the tool data window I'll select my 7 16 end mill for the finish cut. I'll skip priorities and auto set my approaches. Again, I can plunge in rapid since I'm off the part. For width of cut. I'll use just enough to cover my finish allowance of 15 thousandths. I'll auto set surface speed and feed rate. I don't like that feed rate, so I'll adjust it down to 8 thousandths. And make sure flood coolant is on. For my shape, it's pretty simple to take the numbers right off the print. For a start point, I always use line when defining the start point. Despite the line designation this first point is really just a point. I'll begin off the part a bit at minus 6.5 inches in X and positive 3.5 inches in Y. Nothing else is necessary in this line definition. From there, I'll draw a line to the same point in X, down to 2.25 inches in Y. I'll also use the corner R field, to define a 0.25 inch radius at the end of this line into the next line. When the end point is known, no other information is necessary to define the line. For the next line, I'll again choose line. With endpoints of minus 1.5 inches in X and 2.25 inches in Y. With another 0.25 inch radius at the end of that line. For my final line, I'll go straight up at the current X dimension to 3.5 inches just off the part. And I'm finished. That completes the definition of the contour. When I select the top line of this unit, the work being done is highlighted in the graphic window. To see the actual cut, I'll select shape end to end the definition and put a temporary end unit on the program. This allows me to go to tool path to see a line graphic of the cut. Or to go to virtual machining to see a simulation of the tool path. Since I have changed my fixture to reflect the clamps at this point, it looks like the face mill will crash. I can prevent this by going to program edit highlighting the top line in the face mill unit and selecting control outset. This disables the face mill unit without deleting it so that when I run my simulation it's skipped. Selecting program complete and rerunning the simulation shows the program without the crashing face mill. 
With one contour done let's consider a quick way to do this second contour. As you can see, it's an identical contour, just shifted over in X. We can easily accomplish this by inserting an offset unit to shift X over. The offset distance would be 5 plus 3 equals 8 inches, with zeros everywhere else. Then, simply copy the previous line left unit with unit copy. When copying from the existing program, just hit OK without selecting a program. Then enter the number of the unit to be copied. Be sure to add another offset unit with all zeros. This shifts zero back to its original point, required for the rest of the program. Graphics now show we have both contours. Of course, as an alternative, we could have just copied the unit and changed the shape values instead of using offset. Individual preferences vary so use whatever method you prefer. I'll use one other method to define a contour on this longer profile at the bottom of the drawing. In this case, I'll copy the unit, and erase the shape and create a new one with 3D Assist. Note that, only Windows-based controls like the Smooth X, Smooth AI, and Smooth G have this feature. I'm not going to go into detail on how to use 3D Assist here, just show that it can be easily done. After importing and aligning the model, I can easily make a few clicks at the right places and with the press of a button bring the needed values into the shape sequence of the unit. As before, I'll extend the Y beyond the part to allow for roughing material. Also, it is very important to reset the auto approach points, so they can recalculate for the new shape. And we're finished. I'll run a quick graphic check to show all three contours have been done. After returning to the program, I'll delete the temporary end unit and we're ready to continue the program.